Okay, so we're in uh, notes number seven uh, at the bottom of page 64, yeah, where, <laughs> yes, thank you. There we go. Okay. And uh, so that's where I, uh, I stopped myself last time. Uh, I was pretty efficient without you know, having to look at you guys somehow, that really <laughs> made a difference. <laughs> um, and I'm probably going to add, you know, the the seven A or whatever seven B that I posted uh, last night. Um, I'm probably going to add this little section on all pass filters to it. So um, I made all the definitions last time about what uh, minimum phase filters are. Um, and uh, just for a real quick review, um, there we are. Okay, come on. There are, there we go. There are many equivalent definitions of minimum phase. Now, um, I said yesterday that definitions one through five are all necessary and sufficient, which means um, you know you can write an equal sign between any of those definitions. If you have, say, number four, if you know number four is true, then you absolutely have um, uh, number one, two, three, and five also being true, for instance. Um, that may not be exactly true with how I stated them here, but the way that uh, uh, you know there may be some additional words that need to be added to uh, any one of these to to make that true. But um, that is certainly the way we we use it. Okay, so uh, a minimum phase filter, and re remember when I talk about a filter, I'm talking really about any time series, any spatial series, okay, any any um, evenly sampled series, data series. Okay, so um, uh, the filter has zeros. It makes a z polynomial. It has all its zeros outside the unit circle, not on the unit circle, not inside the unit circle, but outside the unit circle. Uh, it is a causal series, and its inverse is causal, which of course implies that you have to be able to define the inverse. All right. It has number three, what is known as the minimum phase property. Um, and um, uh, number four, it has minimum delay. Energy arrives most rapidly. Okay, uh, and another one that we'll see maybe today a little bit. Uh, the amplitude spectrum is the Hilbert transform or the phase spectrum, and vice versa with a little bit of manipulation. Um, now, um, uh, one of the um, uh, one of the questions that that I, I probably didn't uh, address enough yesterday is, you know, minimum phase of what? Okay, and I do want you to study this explanation of the minimum phase property, and and how I derive the phase. Okay, and what the phase spectrum really means, and uh, particularly understanding this diagram right here, uh, that's really key to what I talked about yesterday. So. Um, you know, if uh, if you're not understanding it, um, then then uh, you know we should have a special session just on that diagram. Okay, um, so uh, let's let's make sure we all understand that. I, I admitted yesterday that that uh, which was easy because you guys weren't here. Um, I admitted that it took me two or three years to understand that diagram. Okay, and I don't want you guys to suffer the same delay because uh, it you know it hurt me. Um, all right, so um, you know the minimum phase compared to what? The minimum delay compared to what? Okay, um, uh, and and the idea is that you can find different wavelets, different time series that have exactly the same amplitude and power spectrum. Okay, which is really the same, you know, just just the same thing. So you have exactly the same power spectrum. And if you're talking about a filter, that means the the spectral effect of the filter is the same. OK? 
Okay, but the minimum phase version. Okay, so so uh, first of all, uh, I guess the basic idea is that there are, are many dif different wavelets, many different time series that can have the same spectrum. Okay. So that's concept number one. Concept number two is that one of those one of those uh, time series is going to have the minimum phase property. One of those time series will also have the minimum delay property. Okay, and that'll be the minimum phase one. Uh, you could call the other ones non-minimum phase. You could call the other ones maximum phase if you if you have evidence for that, uh, and so forth. But um, uh, the basic idea is that, uh, for instance, you want your filter to have a certain effect in frequency. You want it to be, say, a low-pass filter. Okay, and so if you design a spectrum, then um, um, you can come up with uh, maybe perhaps an infinity of wavelets that have the same power spectrum. Okay, and then the question is for filtering. Uh, in the time domain by convolution, which one do you select? Okay, and we prefer to select the minimum phase one. So uh, a lot of uh, what we'll do now in the next week or two is about, you know, how do we design and select that that minimum phase filter um, waveform? Okay. So um, that's a. Uh, uh, some of the things that were important that I said uh, uh, yesterday. Um, now, uh, a nice thing about minimum phase filters is that they are invertible um, because they have, um, or, or let's just say, the, the inverse of minimum phase filters is useful. And so it's worth defining the inverse uh, for a minimum phase filter. For you know filters in general, um, you know, if they uh, if they have any zeros inside the unit circle, when you invert that that filter, it's going to each of those zeros inside the unit circle is going to turn into a pole, and a pole inside the unit circle results in an increasing unbounded time series, and that's not useful. All right, so um, um, uh, that's. Uh, uh, one of the chief reasons anymore that we define uh, minimum phase filters is because we know that they can be inverted. And uh, it's useful to consider what we can do with uh, uh, inverse filters. And here is, is one thing. Okay, So we want to apply a filter f to uh, an input x and, um, and uh, get an output y. And we want the input x and the output y to have exactly the same power spectrum. We don't want to do any filtering in that way. We don't want to take out any frequencies. Okay. Uh, now, now we'll ask the question later. Uh, uh, you know, what would we do with such a filter? But uh, um, what? Uh, um, uh, you know, how do we? You know, you don't think of such a, a an all pass filter as a filter, but uh, all pass filters are very useful. And so, uh, okay, I said the spectrum has to be the same. So here's the spectrum of x. Okay, in the z domain, it's x conjugate of one over z times x of z, right? Those multiplying those two polynomials, and uh, that's got to be equal to the spectrum of y, which is y conjugate of one over z times y of z. Okay. And so basically, when we act on x with a filter, that means that um, uh, the filter's effect has got to be 1. It's got to be a polynomial 1. right? The, the, our our, uh, our all-pass filter has, uh, uh, when you, uh, when you uh, square it, when you get our all-pass filter's uh, um, uh, power spectrum in the z domain, it's got to come out to the polynomial that is one times z to the zeroth power. All right. Now, all pass filters, um, I, I say here, they're useful because you can distort the waveform without losing energy. Uh, so, uh, actually, wave propagation codes are all pass filters because they spread the energy around, they reflect the energy, they 
they uh, uh, let the energy pass through the boundaries of the calculation without, you know, removing uh, or adding any energy to the system. Okay. Uh, another all-pass filter is a wave shaping filter, say that would would uh, uh, convert an explosion uh, wavelet to the or a, a an air gun wavelet, say, um, in seismic exploration to the zero phase wavelet. You know, with the centered pulse. That's easy to interpret in uh, in seismic interpretation. Okay, easy to find you know, when the when the center pulse is where the the strongest center pulse is where the uh, where the reflector is located. You know, with a zero phase wavelet, which is not causal, by the way, um, but that really uh, makes the job of identifying small reflections in your data set as much easier. Okay. So uh, okay, let's uh, let me show you a, an all-pass filter. Right, uh, the simplest all-pass filter. Okay, f of z is equal to z. That's the unit delay operator. Okay, delays by one time step. Uh, and and here's the spectrum of of uh, of uh, z. Okay, um, this minute this uh, all-pass filter f conjugate of one over z. Okay, is is one over z. Times f of z, okay. There, f of z is z. So, right, z over z is equal to one, and that's the spectrum uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, of that all-pass filter. So, right away, we've got a uh, we've got a, an all-pass filter. Okay. Um, now, after my discussion of phase yesterday, uh, you might ask, um, what is okay? So that's the amplitude spectrum, you know, s of omega. Uh, what is the phase spectrum? Okay, now z is equal to e to the i omega, and so uh, the phase spectrum of um, of the all-pass filter z is just omega. Okay, so uh, 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 the um, uh, at uh, uh, at zero frequency, the phase is zero at the frequency of two pi. The phase is uh, is uh, two pi, okay, which means that one time around the unit circle for the phase spectrum, uh, actually this is an aside here. One time around the unit circle for the phase spectrum, um, you don't come back to the same uh, phase. So uh, this uh, all pass filter is not a minimum phase filter, okay. Uh, just a little uh, little aside there to connect what we what what we did yesterday. Okay, um, here is a general form for an all-pass filter. Okay, so you can have um, uh, one over alpha minus z in a rational filter with one minus al z over alpha as the denominator. Okay, so the um, uh, the there's a uh, and and then you make uh, uh, alpha greater than one. Okay, so one over alpha is the zero for the numerator. Okay, and the zero of the denominator, which is the pole, if you remember, is uh, is at uh, alpha, and alpha is greater than one. So you got a pole outside. So the filter itself is okay, um, uh, and you got a zero inside. So you wouldn't want to invert this all-pass filter, uh, but you could use it as is. It's it's stable because the pole is outside the unit circle. Okay, so these this is a pole and a zero at polar reciprocal locations, uh, which uh, uh, which means that uh, um, uh, which means they have uh, it, you know each one has an equivalent effect on the uh, uh, on the frequencies. Um, and and by putting them in ratio, that means that uh, you know with the, the zero over the pole, that means that uh, we're going to have a uh, an all pass power spectrum, right? Okay, let's look at that. F of z squared, right? We have f conjugate of one over z times f of uh, of uh, z, right? And that's that's really what I mean here. And uh, z conjugate is one over z. Remember that, you know, with the Fourier definition of z. Okay, so. Uh, uh, you know, we have one over alpha minus z times the quantity one over alpha minus z conjugate, 
And on the bottom, we have the quantity 1 minus z over alpha uh, times the quantity 1 minus z conjugate over alpha. And if you multiply all that out, you can, you can satisfy yourself that that's just 1. Everything cancels out. OK. Um, so uh, uh, you know, we've got the power spectrum we want. S of omega is 1. OK, so that's, that's going to be an all-pass filter. And then what happens with the phase, all right? The phase of the filter, OK, is going to be the phase of the numerator minus the phase of the denominator, OK? So uh, you know, amplitudes multiply or divide, and uh, uh, phases add or subtract, right? Because uh, the phase is in the is in the ex exponent. And then uh, I'll go ahead and write. Um, uh, now, now look, I'm I'm finally writing in delta t uh, because this is going to be a kind of a useful little uh, little filter here, um, and uh, uh, and I want to make sure you know where to write back in delta t when when you have to use delta t not equal to one, okay? So, so here's the definition of z with a non-1 delta t. Z is, z is equal to e to the i omega delta t. Okay? So um, you, uh, uh, you know, find the phase of the numerator, you find the phase of the denominator, you subtract the two. Okay? And uh, so here's the, the phase of the numerator, right? which is, uh, uh, and, and that's at you know, some, some frequency omega. You know, omega is a constant here, uh, tangent minus 1. Uh, and it's it's real it's real okay this is you know the omega we're used to the real omega uh, this is the inverse tangent of um, uh, minus sine omega delta t divided by one over alpha minus cosine omega delta t and then minus tangent uh, minus inverse tangent minus one over alpha sine omega delta t over the quantity one minus one over alpha cosine omega delta t okay and um, you know, let's just uh, uh, examine this uh, by taking alpha. You know, what what is this? Uh, you know, if, if we go all the way, if we if we take alpha towards, if we make our alpha very large, right? So we're gonna we're gonna pull back the zero toward the origin, right? Make alpha very large. We're gonna pull back that zero toward the origin, and this pull is gonna go shooting out along the real axis. Okay, then we can uh, kind of get our heads around this. So the one over alpha is essentially our our uh, uh, are, are you know going away uh, to zero, and so what we're left with uh, in that case, uh, just for you know to think about it in the back of the envelope way, is the inverse tangent of the sine of omega delta t divided by the cosine of omega delta t. But that's the tangent, isn't it? So it's just omega delta t. Okay, and um, so that it's 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 not going to be quite that, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be like that. Um, uh, so what's what's going on here? This is a phase delay, right? We we saw the um, uh, we saw the uh, um, you know the phase delay of this. You know, since the filters, since the um, the phase of a filter adds to the phase of the input, right, on the output, right? This z uh, all pass filter is going to add omega. To any you know to the value of phase in the phase spectrum of the input, um, and uh, and now we see that this uh, filter, this minimum phase filter that we uh, have constructed here, is going to add this uh, uh, omega delta t, okay, approximately. All right, and so so you know the phase is being added to that that that's that that's what we call a phase delay, okay. So um, um, you know that's another example of a uh, uh, of a minimum phase uh, uh, wave shaping filter, and and all it's doing is delaying the phase, right? It's not changing the 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 spectrum, not changing the amplitude spectrum. It's just it's just delaying the phase, okay? And you can construct an arbitrary um, all pass filter given. Uh, a minimum phase filter. So we have a minimum phase a filter that's known to be minimum phase f of z, okay, and we can construct an arbitrary uh, uh, all pass filter. Call it p <coughs> for all pass, and um, uh, and if you take uh, f 
the filter, uh, the minimum phase filter, f conjugate of 1 over z, and you divide by f of z. Okay, and that's why it's important to have a minimum phase filter because you can put it on on the denominator. All right, and then you multiply by you know whatever whatever delay you want. Okay, z to the nth power. You know however much much delay you want. Okay, then uh, then you've got a a, a nice adjustable um, minimum phase. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. A nice adjustable all-pass filter. It is not a minimum phase filter itself, right? Because it's it's got this delay built in. Um, <coughs> let's see. But it's uh, it's going to have a. And if you multiply this out, you know, p uh, conjugate uh, of one over z times p of z is going to be equal to one. Okay, I think you can see that. So um, uh, that's. Uh, uh, that's going to uh, give you that uh, that nice uh, um, all-pass filter. Um, okay, so ju that's just one example of using the use of minimum phase uh, uh, filters. You know, we can construct other filters out of them because of their nice property of uh, useful invertibility.